Do you lack confidence? Because if so, stick around, because I believe this video can really help you. Hi, my name is Sheridan and I'm a voice and confidence coach, but this channel is devoted to helping people feel better about themselves more of the time. And today's video is all about confidence and how you can acquire it. And I've got it down to five simple steps because the important thing is I want you to believe that this can work for you, which actually brings me straight to point number one, which is this. It would be very easy for you to sit there if you lack confidence, thinking, well, he doesn't know me. He doesn't know how just how bad I am. He doesn't know just how severe my lack in confidence is. How can this guy talking at me through a, a YouTube video help me grow in confidence? Well, I am very confident that I can help you because I know how you feel. I know what it feels like to have very poor self-esteem. I know what it feels like not to love myself. I know what it feels like not to deserve that I believe a happy and fulfilling life. And the nice thing is, I am now in a position where I do feel confident and I do feel happy and I do feel fulfilled in all areas of my life. So I have made the very journey that I am asking some of you to make, which is from feeling pretty hopeless and really lacking in confidence to someone who feels that their self-worth and their self-love is healthy and that you too deserve to feel fantastic and feel confident. So how do we do this? Well, I think step one is to realize that yes, you can acquire confidence. Confidence is learnable. It is something you can acquire. But because we're fixed with these ideas and that little voice in our head that's been telling us for so long that we don't deserve it or we don't feel confident, it will be very, very easy to believe that we're kind of stuck and that there's nothing we can do about it. Well, there is something you can do about it. It takes a little effort. It takes a bit of time and it can take changing a few beliefs about who you are and what you deserve. And I think the first thing to realise is that this can't all happen immediately. It's a question of baby steps, one step at a time. And each step you take, you can see a little bit further ahead and feel a bit more confidence and self-belief. If I give you one example of this, as an acting and singing coach during the day, there are opportunities where it's important for me to be able to showcase my performers. And I remember some years ago being invited to put on an open air performance outside a local theatre. And my knee jerk reaction was, no way, no way. There's no way I can do this. And I said this to my wife and I said this to my mother. And those two, the two most influential women in my life, both said to me, oh, but darling, I think you should. I went, no, 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 good. no, darling, I really think you should. And it took a little bit of persuasion, but eventually I put a note on my studio door, an A4 sheet of paper, uh, and tried to collect names to be in this showcase that I was sure no one would want to take part in. Well, much to my surprise, it very quickly gathered 20, 30, I think about 40 names in the end. And we did this showcase and it was a huge success. Later that year, I booked the town hall in our local town and we filled that and we had a, a really, really good uh, couple of performances. And my belief just began to grow. I thought, maybe I can do this. The following year, I booked a local provincial theatre. We sold out. Uh, we had... 50 singers there and we made some money as well. The following year, we booked the same theatre. We did a really major showcase. And just before it, get this, the BBC, that's one of the UK's leading TV channels, rang me up uh, and said, we'd like to come and film your organisation and we'd like to come to the theatre and film you, which they duly did, which then led in turn to a TV appearance on BBC One, where I was teaching people who can't sing to sing. It was called Can't Sing Singers. And that was six weeks of primetime BBC One Saturday Night TV. And at the end of that, we actually won. I was the winning vocal coach on that show. Am I telling you this to brag? No, of course not. I'm just telling you that as of now, I have currently mounted, I think, 10 theatre productions, all of which have sold out and made money and given between 40 and 50 singers at each event the opportunity to showcase their talents. And this is the guy who didn't dare put on his first show until his mummy and his wife said, I really think you should.
But by doing this one step at a time and taking these baby steps, I discovered that this is something I can do. And if I wanted to do it again, which of course I will at some point, I now know I can do it. I have that confidence. But that confidence was acquired by a series of mini successes. And this is all you have to do. So you just work out where you feel you're lacking in your life, where you feel your self-belief is lacking or where your self-love is lacking. First of all, be kind to yourself. It's, it's a gentle process, simple baby steps. Take one tiny step towards the thing that you want to achieve. And just gradually you'll see as you experience a little bit of success, it'll change your belief and then make you realize that you can achieve the next baby step. And these steps gradually build up. And as I say, they do literally change how you perceive your ability to achieve. It's a bit like climbing mountains. This is sometimes called the peak to peak principle. And I've never done this. But if you imagine you're climbing a mountain range and you look straight at the tallest mountain, you're going to be intimidated by that. But if you just climb a little hill first, at the top of that hill, you'll see the next one, which is a bit higher. You climb that one, the next one's a bit higher still. And gradually, the further up you go, the further ahead you can see. Your confidence will grow in just the same way. So actually, I've already covered the first two points, haven't I? The first point was, yes, you. Please don't feel you're the exception. You're the one person whose confidence can never grow because it simply isn't true. So hang in there. The second step was to take baby steps, do things gradually, the peak to peak principle, and gradually building on those little successes that you experience, which will change how you believe. The third step, and this is a big one, is to learn not to care what other people think of you. I think we are all governed far too much by other people's opinions. And the only opinion that really matters, of course, and you've heard this before, is your opinion of you. And if I might remind you of something I said on previous videos, it's about separating tasks. So your task, my task, is to be the best person you can be. Be kind to other people, be generous, do the best you can in all situations. That's your task. What your task is not is how other people receive you. That's their task and only they can do that. If we spend our whole lives making our happiness, self-worth and confidence dependent upon how other people react to what we do, then we're screwed because we can never do that. There will be people out there now who don't like me. Oh, what a horrible thought. But I have to live with that. The best I can do is be comfortable with who I am and go on delivering the best I possibly can to the best of my ability. That's all I can do. But I cannot control what other people think of me. And that's a fairly safe place to be. Otherwise, as I say, we're letting other people control how we feel and making our happiness dependent on how they respond to us. That's no way forward. So that's point number three. Point number four to acquire confidence, and I don't want to sound glib saying this, but it does help, which is to act as if. Now, I see between six and seven people a day for an hour each in my studio, a mixture of teaching, acting, singing, and some of it's counselling or life coaching, a bit like I'm doing right now. And I will openly admit to you that I get nervous before every session I teach. So if I have a batch of four people coming to see me in the evening, for example, I still feel after 20 something years of doing this, a little bit of a kind of nervous feeling in my stomach just before people come. And that's because I want to do my best and I don't want to let people down. But saying that doesn't mean I'm not confident. It just says that little bit of self-doubt still kicks in sometimes. And the way I deal with this is I kind of thump myself in the chest and go, right, energy. And I summon some energy and I act as if I'm the confident person that I actually believe I deserve to be. And this works. And within minutes, I'm acting as if I'm this confident person. And of course, it stops being acting very, very quickly, and a real confidence kicks in. Now, a point on real confidence. Real confidence is not arrogance. Arrogance is when people are actually covering up low self-esteem because they care what other people think. Back to that one again. And so they cover it with a layer of overconfidence, uh, of uh, entitlement, uh, believing they're better than everybody else. Of course, they don't believe this. But arrogance is just compensating for a lack of confidence. Real confidence allows for vulnerability. It allows 
imperfection. It allows us to be flawed. I am all of the above, but I'm confident enough to admit that to anybody who might be watching this video. And I believe that allows me to connect with people more effectively because I don't need to impress anybody, but it's very important to me that I do genuinely connect as a real human being. So that's why I act as if. Now, there are other things you've heard before. If you want to make a difficult phone call, sometimes it helps to stand up. We've all heard in the corporate world of power dressing. This is people, you know, wearing the classic dark suit, white shirt, red tie or whatever, because it gives them a feeling of confidence. And on the one hand, that sounds a bit superficial, but whatever it takes, if it takes standing up to make a difficult phone call, if it takes dressing well to make yourself feel good, then these things are fine. It's all part of the acting as if, or dare I say it, fake it till you make it, which again can sound a bit glib, but there are elements of truth in that too. So that's point number four. And point number five, which I've saved for the last, and I've also said this before, is to recognise that that little voice in your head that tells you that you're inadequate, not good enough, unlovable, falling short, a failure, oh, here I go again, screwing up as normal. That little voice in your head, dear friends, is nothing to do with who you really are. It's only a little voice in your head. If you'd like to watch another video, I'll put the link above about separating from that little voice in your head as you learn to realise it's not your real identity. It's only a little voice in your head. My last video was about the subconscious mind, which runs 95% of our thinking. So remember, the bit you're consciously aware of is only 5% of your thinking power. Don't waste that other 95%. As I say, there's another video. I'll put a link to that uh, in the description below this video. But that's it for now on confidence. We can talk more about this. I will make further videos on confidence. But the most important thing to realise is, yes, you too. You're not the exception. And that little voice in your head will love telling you, ah, uh, no one can help me. Yes, they can. Yes, they can. If you're finding this helpful, please, please, please do put a comment below. I'd love to hear your feedback. And if you're enjoying this channel, please subscribe and hit that subscribe button. And of course, also that notifications bell as well. And I look forward to seeing you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. Ba -da -ba -ba -da.